Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about my imaging session tonight. I wanted to quickly show you why. So for the first time, I have two rigs set up simultaneously. So here I have the Ascar 400 with the 2600 mono camera. And here I have the Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian scope with the 2600 color camera. So join me tonight while I show you what I capture with this telescope. Okay, so tonight with this big telescope, I'm gonna go after M78, which is in the Orion constellation. Now, I've never shot this target before, and it often gets overlooked. You've got such an amazing targets visible at the moment in the south. You've got obviously the Orion Nebula, they've got the Horsehead Nebula, you've got the Rosette Nebula, you've got the Co Nebula, um, but M78 seems to be overlooked a little bit. Um, so, I wanted to get the big telescope out and zoom right in and try and frame it. Um, so, that is what I am shooting with the 190 Maxitoff Newtonian you see behind me. Down at the other end, I'm in the middle of a um, collaboration on the Cone Nebula, which I'm really excited to, to bring you over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, but tonight I'm really um, focused on actually testing out the mount. So this is the, the first, or the, well, this is the first proper imaging session I've had with the mount. I've done a couple of nights setting up and a couple of TED test subs with it, uh, but this is the first time I'm actually capturing capturing an image with the new CEM60 mount. So I've had it sat in the garage for quite a long time, but I had to wait for the, um, the tripod or the tri-peer to be, to be delivered. Um, and now I've got it, I'm really excited to, to be imaging with it. I've captured about 10, 15 subs already. Um, I don't want to stand by the, by the uh, mount for too long, so I'm going to make this quite short, but captured about 10, 15 subs already, and the guiding's looking pretty good. The stars are looking fairly sharp, um, so um, I'm quite excited by this. Um, but the mount itself seems to be great. It's really nice to polar align, much better than the Skywatcher mount. It's very, very hard to balance, so the... Um, the, the RA and the deck uh, axes are extremely fluid compared to the, the Skywatch amount, so it makes it very tricky to balance, but I think that that's obviously a good thing, and it shows how, um, how poor my balancing was before. Um, but I have, uh, have got it all balanced, have got it set up in imaging, um, and I'm excited to see the results. Another great thing about this mount is the cable management, so it's actually got power outputs um, on the underside of the mount, so I can power everything from from this region of the mountain i don't have to have wires dangling um dangling down to my to my power output down down in that box so that's really nice um but i'm going to set a time lapse up um it's supposed to be clear all night so i'm excited to see what i can collect So it stayed clear for most of the night last night and it was great to finally have two rigs set up in the garden. Uh, the Ascar rig on the NEQ6 went flawlessly. That telescope's just so easy to use. You just literally grab it, put it on the telescope and you're good to go. Um, the Skywatcher rig on the other hand caused me quite a few issues and I'm having a little bit of a problem with this telescope. Now it started off okay, so I got about two, maybe two and a half hours of data on M78 before it disappeared behind my neighbor's tree, which is great. And hopefully I've got an image to, to show you at the end of the video. I haven't quite edited the data yet, but I should be able to pull something together. Yeah. After I um, finished photographing M78, I decided to slew to a different target, and this is where the issues are coming in. So I'm starting to get a bit of tilt in my focus or in, in my image train, which is causing um, very odd shape oval stars, and I can't really seem to find a solution for that. It was fine when I was shooting M78, but then when I slewed the camera to point towards the cat's eye galaxy, um, I tried to capture four hours of data on the cat's eye galaxy and none of it's usable. Um, so 
yeah, slight issue and I'm going to take you over to the telescope and try and show you what that problem is. Okay, so I don't know how well this is going to show up in the, uh, in the video, but this is the problem that I'm having. There is, as you can see, quite a bit of flex in this focuser. No matter how hard I tighten this screw, that's as tight as I can get it, there is still quite a bit of flex. Um, in the imaging train and it was fine absolutely fine with my old camera the 1600 but that is much smaller and lighter than the 2600 um, and even without the filter wheel with just the color camera i am having some issues now i don't know whether you can see that but you can see here there's a little gap and then if it slews i'm getting even more of a gap and even more tilt in my images so when i do put the 2600 mono on here with the the big heavy filter wheel as well with the um the seven position filter wheel that just adds more weight to this and i'm getting more flexure in this um in in the focuser which is uh, quite annoying now i've spoken to quite a few retailers over the last week or so to see if there's any solutions and the only thing that they can suggest really is changing the whole focuser now they recommend the moonlight focuser but actually getting hold of a moonlight focuser is almost impossible at the moment and they don't know when they're going to be coming back into stock. Another issue with the moonlight focuser is you've got to attach or detach this focuser, completely remove it, and add the new one in and I have read online quite a few horror stories about not being able to get collimation after you switch out the focuser so I'm really hesitant to try that because I don't want to completely ruin this telescope. But this, is, this issue um, is kind of causing me to not use the scope at the moment. I'm always reaching for the Ascar. It's just so simple to use. Um, sometimes it seems to work quite well. Um, other times I seem to be having to bin most of the night's data. Now, one suggestion I did have was moving the position of the OTA, so rotating it completely. So this is pointing downwards towards the mount, um, which should hopefully minimize some of that flex that is actually in the in the focuser um, so i will give that a go but if anyone has any suggestions i would really appreciate it so that's the issue that i'm having with the skywatcher telescope at the moment and i'm hoping to try and find a solution because i absolutely love this telescope when it's working when the stars are sharp right to the edges the the images they produces is absolutely fantastic there's so much detail um, in, in the nebulas and the galaxies. So I really want to try and find a solution to this, this problem. So if you've got any ideas, please do let me know in the comments below. But anyway, here is the image of M78 that I managed to capture last night. It is only two hours of data, maybe two and a half. Um, so it's not gonna be the best image you'll ever see, but I thought I would share it with you anyway. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please do hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, if you've got any solutions to my focus issue, please, uh, please let me know in the comments below. See you in the next video.